Hey YouTube, today I'm bringing you guys a video review of MSI's new laptop, the GE60. It is a very nice laptop with a 15.6 inch screen. It's pretty light for a gaming laptop due to being a plastic construction. Um, people have complained about it not being very strong, but it's plenty sturdy. It, it isn't going anywhere. Um, it has a bit of a brushed aluminum look to it, but it is plastic and it's very mirror image as you can see. These stripes in pictures and on camera look very prominent and bright red, but they're really not. It's very dark maroon. You can't even see them in some light. Uh, flipping over the laptop, we can see the battery at the back, just a standard 6 cell. The battery life on this laptop is very good for a gaming laptop. Uh, you can get through a full length movie plus some web browsing on full, uh, full display brightness. It's plenty fine. You can also see the access panel here to get to all the components. I'll open it up for, in a minute for you guys. And, um, it's very acceptant of modding. You can have access to just about any component you could hope to upgrade from here. Also on the bottom you can see the card reader and the two subwoofers. There's also two speakers on the inside of the laptop. Over here we have the power cord. and uh, The DC adapter is very big and heavy but it's a good quality made by light on. And it also has a very large cord about 13 foot so it's long enough to get you just about where, anywhere you'd want to go. Something I'd like to add is because this is so reflective, this laptop is a fingerprint magnet, so touch with caution. It is very beautiful, but smudges do kind of throw it off, so I'm not crazy about that, but whatever. Um, here at the top, we can see the HD webcam, kind of, and uh, dual microphone inputs. Down here, we have the spec sticker, which show you what CPU you have and all that. You can't read it on here, but I'll show the specs in the description. Uh, you also have your stickers for your core and Windows 7, your NVIDIA graphics and all that. Uh, the screen is a 15.6 inch 1080p matte type. It is beautiful. I am very pleased with it. I was a bit skeptical of it being matte type because usually they don't look as good as glossy, but it, I, couldn't, I couldn't hope for it to be better. It's awesome. Uh, it has a very good viewing angle. You can go to every extreme and still see the screen very well. Here's each side here. The bottom isn't the best, but you're not going to be looking at it from the bottom, so it's fine. Um, moving down here, we can see the red pin striping that match the uh, the striping on the front. It has a very nice aesthetic design. Up here at the top, we have buttons that coincide with uh, a software that comes on it called the S-Bar, which is this up here. When you hover your mouse over it, it pulls up this bar which gives you options such as turning on Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all that kind of stuff. We have the eject button for the DVD tray, your display on and off, Wi-Fi on and off. That is a cooling system override, a turbo button, and your power button. Now I'd like to talk about this cooling system override. What that does is when you press it, it ramps up your fans to max speed. So if you're doing something that's CPU intensive and it's going to get hot, you can hit that and it'll keep it nice and cool. The turbo button will glow blue when you're doing something that's CPU intensive, such as a game or video rendering. And uh, it just lets you know so that it, it, it's just kind of an indicator it lets you know. The button itself is user defined, so you can make it open whatever you want. Um, for instance, you could have it set to open MSI Afterburner, so you could overclock your GPU whenever you wanted at the push of a button. Um, we also have the additional two speakers. Now, it's very nice having four speakers on this. It almost creates kind of a surround sound effect. Moving down to the laptop, it is designed by SteelSeries, as you can see there, their logo. And it is a very nice keyboard. Chiclet style, designed for gaming. There is no flex in it anywhere, no matter what you do. Full number pad. I'm very pleased with it. I just couldn't imagine it being any better. Um, a sec here. Up at the top, we have FN keys. We have a display switch if you have it hooked up to an external monitor. A button to turn on and off your touchpad. Another user-defined key, you could have that set to whatever you want it to be, your browser, iTunes, whatever. Eco, I'll get to that in a minute. Webcam on and off, Wi-Fi on and off, Bluetooth on and off, and a sleep button. This Eco, it opens up a menu where you can 
switch between, say, gaming mode or video mode or presentation mode. I'm not exactly sure what's the difference between each mode, but it does change the screen brightness. Uh, I guess it's a useful feature, but I don't, I don't really see myself using it. Uh, moving down here, we have another button to turn on and off the touchpad. And here is the actual touchpad. It's a pretty good size, not too large, not too small. It has a series of dimples and a grid pattern to create a nice subtle texture. Um, down below that, we have a rocker switch for the uh, right and left click mouse, but uh, I'm not very happy with it being a rocker switch. It just doesn't seem to work quite as well. Uh, if you click very off to the edge, it's very spongy and doesn't give you a good response. In the middle, it has a good response and a good click sound, and t more towards the middle. It, it's loud and it's just not very good quality. I, I don't really know why they went with this design, but most of the time you're going to be using an external mouse or you can just click with the touchpad. Something else too, it uh, supports multi-gesture uh, touches as well too, so like zooming in and out or switching between pages, it supports that nicely. Here you have the key for your indicator LEDs, which are right here along the edge. Um, we have your hard drive access, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, battery indicator, caps lock, numbers lock, and sleep mode. Going to the side of the laptop here, we can see all the ports. We have Kenningston lock, your DC jack, your uh, exhaust for your cooling system, a USB 2.0, a HDMI output, two USB 3.0s, and your uh, microphone and earbud jacks. On the other side here we have your disc, your uh, optical drive, another USB 2.0 port, an RGB output for a monitor or a TV, and an RJ45 Ethernet jack. Here we are underneath the laptop again. By removing four screws you can pull off this access panel here and have access to all your components. You've got both RAM sticks. Six gigabytes of RAM come in at factory, but it's expandable up to 16, so you can it'll handle video rendering or whatever you want to do quite nicely. You've got your hard drive, 750 gig factory. Uh, here's your graphics chip, which is a NVIDIA 650M chip. It is based on the new Kepler core as opposed to the Fermi of last gen, so it's brand new and up to date. Over here you have your CPU which is an Intel i7-3610QM uh, processor. It is very new. It is based on Intel's uh, Ivy Bridge, which is it's smaller, more power efficient. It runs cooler, but it has the same or better processing abilities than the Sandy Bridge of last gen. Um, this is, like I said, very new, quarter two, 2012. Here you can see the cooling system and the fan. It's very, it cools the laptop very efficiently and it's also very quiet. Over here is the Wi-Fi card with dual antenna. It also supports Bluetooth. It comes in at factory. And this is interesting. This is an MCTA slot. So you can stick a little SSD card in here and transfer Windows over to it. And um, it'll boot from this, which is very quick. And it'll boot up very fast in a matter of seconds. But it already comes factory with a very fast boot time. So... I think it's a worthy upgrade if you have the ability to do it. Alright guys, thank you for watching my review. If there's anything that, I, that you think I should go over again, just leave a comment and I'll be sure to go over it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.